This one? So basically, all the data that I yeah 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 We are waiting for a few more people to join. We will start in a minute. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the awareness around coronavirus and how you as corporate should be dealing with your offices and workspaces. I'm Dr. Roman Kuhn, Associate Director of Medicine at the Hi, I'm Dr. Kuhn, Associate Director of Medicine at the Hi, I'm Dr. Kuhn, Associate Director of Medicine at the Hi, I'm Dr. Kuhn, Associate Director of Medicine at the Hi, I'm Dr. Kuhn, Associate Director of Medicine at the Hi, I'm Dr. Kuhn, Associate Director of Medicine at the Hi, I'm Dr. Kuhn, Associate Director of Medicine at the Hi, I'm Dr. Kuhn, Associate Director of Medicine at the Hi, I'm Dr. Kuhn, Associate Director of you will have the opportunity to submit the text questions by typing your questions into the question panel of the telephone panel on the right side of your screen. You will be sending your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the question and answer session at the end of today's presentation. We'll start with what exactly is coronavirus. It's a large family of viruses that causes illnesses ranging from a common cold to severe illnesses like middle-aged respiratory syndrome and severe acute respiratory disease. 
And this is present in all the countries. It's a new strain which was identified in 2019 and has not been previous communities. So that's why the name COVID 19. The symptoms, as we all know, are alcoholic fever, dry cough, shortness of breath, and some patients could have very good health. Now, how does this spread? It's a droplet infection, as we all know. When you cough, the droplets travel, and people around you can catch the infection. And uh, it also is there on the surfaces around you, the virus, the door knobs, the lip buttons, and things like that. And if you touch them and then touch your face, eyes, nose, or face, then you can catch the infection. So how do we avoid getting infected? We should wash our hands frequently with soap and water, or you can have a hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer in case soap and water is not available. available. And uh, also while so coughing, you should be very careful. Very careful. You should use your use pen to help when you go, you cough, use a tissue, and, and then dispose it off after you cough, and then clean your hands. And as much as possible, avoid handshakes. And uh, you know, there is a best form of greeting in today's end. So, how do we how avoid, avoid getting infected? So, so avoid, avoid coming into contact, contact with people who are sick. Anybody who has a tool like illness and soft cold, just stay away from them. And uh, as, as I said earlier, wash your hands, clean your hands, don't touch your face. And avoid sharing dishes with people who have fever or Also, avoid large gatherings. So, there's a lot of people, whether it's a meeting, it's a conference, it's a sporting event, whatever it is, just avoid Stay at home as much as possible. And clean the surfaces around you, your table top, your mobiles, your laptops. And finally, if you have symptoms of fever or hospital, then Seek medical advice. Now, how do we differentiate whether it's a common cold, whether it's flu, whether it's a allergy, or is it COVID 19? Or people come with this for a So, I will just tell you in a nutshell. With the common cold, it's more about short throat, sneezing, and some uh, running nose and things like that. And with flu, you have antibodies, or you have extreme body ache, and cough. Allergies is mostly nasal symptoms, it's all right, it's runny nose and sneezing. But with COVID, particularly what we see, it's high grade fever, it's dry cough, and then there is breathlessness. So these are the key main symptoms. If you have high fever, you have a dry cough, you're short of breath, then you would probably be having it if there is a history of contact with a positive patient, or a history of travel, or a history of contact with people who have travel. So, so can, can we just get to ask us and say, no, this is not required. Only if you're a suspect, suspected case, then it should be done on the right channel, which is the different hospitals right now. Right now, I'm going to introduce with the travel history to those countries where there is this disease presently are being tested in case there's a suspicion that they could have. Only if you labs are doing the test because you need a sophisticated university lab to do these tests because the path of the three villages of virus and you have to be extremely careful. You have to follow the safety norms. And uh, actually, the government is considering private labs not to start testing and has issued guidelines which we might receive in time. So, will I recover or will I get complications is a very common question. So, I just want to tell you that eighty percent of people who have a mild illness and will recover on their own with mild treatment. But many persons can have pneumonia or any other respiratory illness. And how will them? How will them? They will require ICU care. So we don't have to worry at all because most of the symptoms are mild and people are going to go. But we have been extremely careful because we can transmit it to people if we have So social distancing, I would say this is the most important way of preventing the spread of the disease right now. 
So reducing contact between people is very, very important. So large gatherings, large groups of people in closed buildings should not stay there. We should cancel all events where there are more than 50 people coming together. And this is the only way to flatten the curve, as they say. So avoid group gatherings, avoid all uh, concerts, theaters, as it is the government has shut the uh, cinema halls and uh, clubs are being shut and schools are anyway closed. So avoid also going to the gym, going to the swimming and things like that. Non essential stuff should not be done. Even while going to the uh, local restaurants, I think you should avoid doing that, but if you still go, then be careful, maintain the distance between tables. Even when you go to places of worship like temples, monasteries, you have to be extremely careful. There should be too many people there at the same time. Avoid as of now as much as you can. And um, traveling within the country, again, you have to be careful. It's a specific show that you travel. Because if you travel in a train or a railway, you have chances that people would have it and they would give it to you. If you are in information, you can use it. So, what is safe to do as of nothing? Yes, you can go out for a walk. If you are alone, you are alone. You can play in your garden. You can go in your room, in your house, whatever you want to do. And if you want to stay in touch with friends, family, social media, video calls, that's the way to go. Now, what are the myths of coronavirus? There are lots of myths. And uh, one of the main myths is that it only affects the older people. Well, what I actually mean when we say that is that the complications can happen in older people. That doesn't mean the younger ones aren't getting the infection. The younger ones are getting the infection, and some of them are actually getting complications, but the percentage of the younger people getting complications is very low. So but that doesn't mean that they don't take care because if they are infected and they have mild symptoms and they won't come to us, they keep spreading it around the workplace or wherever they go. And when they go back to their house, they give it to their parents, grandparents, which is the most disturbing thing. So thermal scanners can actually detect coronavirus symptoms like fever and all that. So anybody who has fever, fever or sickness, or sickness can just can, can just scan them. Another myth, another myth is alcohol, 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 all over the body will kill the virus. Nothing like that. This is not a virus. And the same oil can block the early coronavirus from entering the body. Again, we should not pay any to it. Anything uh, which has any type of alcohol or chloroform can be actually those viruses on the surface. Antibiotics have no role, as we've been saying time and again. It's only in the later stage in complicated patients when they get secondary infections that the antibiotics come into play. So initially, we are not supposed to get antibiotics. And dryers are supposed to be effectively killing the virus. Again, a bit. no rule of hand dryers in this. So, vaccine against pneumonia can protect against coronavirus. Another bit, unlikely, nothing like that will happen. There is no vaccine against coronavirus as of now. As you all know, it's going to take a year and a year now for the vaccine to be developed. Garlic can prevent infection again and again. And um, we are getting lots of followers or uh, staff to read that there is a particular medicine which will help in coronavirus. But as of now, there is no medicine which is specific uh, for this disease or this virus. So it's all symptomatic treatment. Certain medicines have been used, but again, it's been used for very critical patients, and those are all salvaged there. Another myth is ultraviolet disinfection lamp can kill. Again, don't pay heed to these things. It's it's not safe to receive letters or packages from China. Again, a myth. The virus it does not stay on those surface or letters or paper for that long, so we don't have to worry about that. Another myth: regularly rinsing your nose with saline will prevent infection. I don't think that makes sense. So. What should we be doing? Chicken. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been asking about eating chicken. So a lot of people have been asking us uh, whether the uh, eating non-veg food or uh, chicken or eggs or mutton can lead to infection. Absolutely not. 
this infection is not spreading from animals to humans as of now. It's a human to human transmission. But having said that, I would say just cook it properly. It should be not undercooked or raw because if you, you're not going to get COVID infection, but you'll get some other infection. So be careful, but you can eat it. This infection does not spread by eating chicken or eggs or non -wit. So uh, what exactly should we be doing at workplaces, offices, corporates, small clubs? Let's talk about people with poor morbidities like diabetes and all those other issues. Okay. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry for the interruption and I'll start again. So employees who have a flu or cold or cough or signs of any infection, then they should stay at home. They should inform their employees and follow the policies laid down by their companies. So don't rush for medical certificates because uh, medical providers are also busy and it's not required. You can do that on the phone or through whatever email, things like that. So what we have to basically emphasize on is that whenever we have flu, cough, cold, then stay at home and um, use the uh, necessary precautions, the uh, respiratory hygiene, the cough and sneeze etiquette, so that we don't give it to others. And as much as possible, uh, use hand sanitizers in your workplace. Ask everybody to clean their hands very often. See, what happens is that uh, we might be fine, but we might give it to someone else if we have the, or if we carry the infection. And in this case, the most vulnerable population is the older people, people with uh, other medical problems, especially cardiac problems, hypertension, diabetes, cancer patients, patients who are on immunosuppressants, on steroids. So they're at a very high risk, especially if they're above 60 years of age. So be careful with your hand hygiene. Whenever you go to your office or when you come back home from your office, you should just clean your hands. So what changes are you going to make in your daily routine? So avoid meeting too many people. What you've been doing in the past is gone. Now you have to have some policy as to how to avoid infections. So don't meet anybody if it's not essential. Encourage use of technology, as I said earlier also, and avoid going to gyms and stuff like that. Restaurants, bars, pubs should not be entertained. So tippers, employees who are sick, they should be screened, they should be given proper advice, they should be asked to stay at home so they don't transmit it to others and should be told what precautions they have to take. So there's a gun to screen employees with fever and uh, that 
is an easier way of finding out who could be having fever, cough, cold, and that's a good way to figure out who's having fever. So if somebody uh, who has traveled abroad and employee and comes to office, so what we should do is if he doesn't have any symptoms, he should uh, be asked to do self-quarantine and he should inform his supervisor. And we should identify those employees who've been in touch with him and ask them to self-quarantine themselves, clean the office. So I think even without symptoms, if you have people traveling from overseas from the areas which are uh, uh, which have been sensitive all over the world, there needs to be a quarantine even if they, there aren't any symptoms. For example, if somebody has come from Italy and China and a few other countries which have been coming out in the newspapers, they need to be at home. They need to be at home for at least 14 days. That is what self-quarantine means. And self-quarantine means that you stay at home, you stay put. It's not like you're away from the office or you're home, but you're going different places, no. So even if you're asymptomatic, but coming from a few countries which are sensitive and just everybody knows about it, there has to be a quarantine. So a travel history from overseas amongst the employees, even without symptoms, they have, they have to be quarantined at home. So actually with symptoms, it's important. Uh, it's very easy because you get to know and then the whole task force comes into place and you know uh, stuff like that. But I think what goes missing is when people come asymptomatic back from wherever they are traveling overseas. So that as, in, as a policy is very important uh, in your organization. So as uh, the doctor has rightly said, without symptoms, you still need to be quarantined. Yeah. But if you have symptoms and you come to the office and yeah. there's a history of travel, then you have to be isolated in one single room and the, we have to inform the authorities, you have to be safely transferred to a particular health uh, facility. We have to inform the district nodal officer and uh, the authorities of the government, then you will be safely transferred to the referral hospital for testing and treatment. So con confidentiality of the employee should be maintained. The office should ideally be shut down and clean, sanitized properly. And people who have been in touch with the uh, particular employee, they should be asked to self-quarantine. And uh, the best way is actually right now to work from home as much as possible in whichever business you are. If it's possible, try to do that. The travel advisory as of now today is to stop international travel completely. And uh, for domestic travel also, people who have an illness or flu or viral or whatever, they should not be traveling. And even if they are fine, healthy, unnecessary travel has to be avoided because then you're exposed to the gathering, the people, the airplanes or the trains, which could be crowded and you could get the infection. So. Also, I think in the organizations, uh, if you have doors, I mean, there, there must be a lot of people who are working together in a hall or a few rooms. But there are always doors which have either an uh, either a steel handle or something. I personally feel they should the doors should just stay open. Yeah, you might be having air conditioning inside, but if you feel there are just too many people opening the same door, holding on to the handle uh, and opening the door, just have the doors open. You, that's the best way instead of just you know asking everybody who's coming in and out to keep on uh, using a sterilizer. I think just keep the doors open within within your. Uh, I mean, if there are offices and stuff like that, there's no point multiple people, uh, you know, just uh, pushing the door open or pulling it. That, that itself then becomes like a source. It's not to make you paranoid. These are just small things which you could, uh, um, because the virus does stay on uh, surface uh, for um, at least three to four days. Yeah. So again, I would like to add here, when you go back home from your workplace, make sure that you clean your hands. You don't touch each and everything. Once you enter, take out your clothes, give them for washing. And at home also, you have children, you have elderly. You have...
touched by so many people and you could carry the infection from there and not everyone it's not practical that you touch the currency and you keep washing your hands so try to do digital payments as much as possible just in case you have touched currency just keep a hand sanitizer in your pocket just clean your hand so routine environmental cleaning is also very important as we said the surface has the virus so your countertops the lift buttons the handrails doorknobs everything has to be cleaned with alcohol based sanitizer so those wipes disposable wipes can be used for that so how do we handle visitors we have to make sure that too many people are not entertained too many people are not in contact with each other there should be areas of reception where visitors can be managed we have to again screen those visitors for any history of travels whether they have any symptoms and keep the hand sanitizers handy everywhere so that people can use them food has to be handled carefully and the people who make the food uh, they should be the staff there has to be uh, screened for any illness they should be properly taught strict hand hygiene because uh, if the food is infected then other problems will happen or people will touch the same uh, dishes and things like that and you can get infection so uh, for any queries related to health people may contact on ministry of health and family welfare the helpline number is there which is uh, 0112397 or they can email on ncov2019 at gmail.com um, now we'll be uh, open to taking questions so if you have any questions you can start asking questions to us we'll answer them well uh, a sanitizer which has at least 75 percent alcohol will definitely kill the coronavirus so that's why we are insisting that use those sanitizers which have 75 percent alcohol so each and every sanitizer will not you have to make sure that it has at least 70 to 75 percent alcohol content and that will take care of it or it has to be uh, chlorine based sanitizer and things like that Radhe Thakur. The next question is from Mr. Radhe Thakur, and it's Will India be able to stop community spread of COVID 19? If yes, then how much time it will take to make the condition to be normal? So, definitely, yes, I would say that uh, India has uh, taken too many precautions. The government has been very proactive so that we don't go from the second stage to the third stage of the uh, epidemic community spread hasn't happened as yet as we all know and we've been it's been more than a month now and uh, social distancing closing of schools whatever precautions we're taking i definitely feel that it's not going to spread but whatever cases we have in days to come we might have them then we know how to deal with it we're prepared for it also the government has done a dipstick of a lot of people who have uh, similar symptoms um uh, like running nose and fever and stuff like that roughly i think around more than 500 samples had been taken by nicd and they did run random tests uh, for coronavirus and none of them came positive so the purpose of doing a dipstick testing in uh, at a community level is to know if people are going undetected with similar symptoms but the good news is that the country has been able to contain it and uh, there is no community spread at this point in time so all these measures are being taken at the back end, some stuff which you will never get to know. But yeah, there's testing happening of random people with similar symptoms. And that's how in an epidemic or a pandemic, one gets to know if there is community spread. So um, India has been able to uh, contain it as of now. The next question is by Suzanne. And the question is whether at this moment private hospitals are not allowed to take in suspected COVID cases. Is this correct? 
Well, yes, it is correct. At the moment, private hospitals have not been allowed by the government to take in suspected COVID cases. But we've been asked to uh, stay standby. And at any moment, if they feel there's a requirement, then they'll tell the, some designated private hospitals, not all of private hospitals, to take in cases. And we are ready for that. But as of now, yes, it's not allowed. And yeah, they've designated not all private hospitals, but some private hospitals have been designated by the government and they've asked us to be ready with everything, with beds and the entire SOP. And uh, uh, as soon as they feel that uh, these hospitals also need to pitch in and admit patients, then yes, there will be private hospitals shortlisted by the government to take in patients as and when required. Yeah. Uh, the next question is by Mansi Agarwal. Shall we allow maids, nannies to take care of kids? Uh, yeah. Well, yes, uh, we can do that, provided they are healthy. In case they are having any fever or cough, cold, then it's better to keep them away for at least two weeks, ask them to stay home and inform you on the phone once they get better. And at the same time, if there are problems, they should get in touch with the healthcare worker. You can help them in uh, getting through to the doctor on the phone. See, most of us will actually be having cough, cold, minor cough, cold, or uh, say common yeah, cold or viral. Lockdown. So that will get better anyway. So you don't have to really panic that everyone is not having COVID. So, but yeah, one has to be careful because even those cough, cold, or minor infections can be transmitted to your children. So you have yeah, to but that goes for each one of you mm -hmm. in the house, not only uh, people who are helping you in the house, parents, grandparents. Um, husband, wife, children, uh, nannies, any of you, if you have fever and if you have cold uh, and you think you need to be tested, just go to your primary physician. He will check you out. He'll check your vitals. He'll be able to tell you better uh, if the symptoms fit into uh, COVID or they, if they don't. So regardless, if it's a nanny or a mother, it, it just remains the same. And you I, need to follow the same protocol. And I would like to add that uh, just screen them and also teach them, educate them yeah uh, the most important thing for these people is uh, hand hygiene so if they maintain that and if they don't have symptoms i i don't think we should panic regarding their entry into the house i think where nannies are concerned there's just a small tip which which i actually told somebody who helps me is most of the times nannies do take an off say a weekly off or a two weekly off and then they go to churches for a or to a temple or they go to you know uh, their own uh, ghettos or people where they collect you know as they have fun or whatever they meet up with family and all i think we should restrict that i've personally told people at home to restrict going out of the house and meeting uh, uh, you know wherever they usually meet their people from the villages or in the you know in the uh, temple or wherever they meet they do take an off and go and meet people in bulk i think that is what one needs to be more careful about just tell them you you'll get your weekly off a few weeks or months later and to avoid going to places and also tell them when they're yapping with somebody outside the home and if the, the person has a, a cold and cough to just stay away yeah the next question is uh, again from susan and the question is uh, will this change soon well yes definitely that's hope what we're so. hoping hope for, so and pray for it, the yeah. next two weeks are very important as all the advisories yeah. right now are till 31st of march because whatever cases have been positive will actually infect people in these days only so by 31st of march we would actually know where it's heading and um, we hope that it doesn't spread and as of now there is no community transmission happening so we hope it stays like that but in case uh, the number increases then we'll take care of it we are adequately equipped and we can handle it but let's hope that it doesn't and it's going to change soon it's not endless anyway yeah. because all these pandemics epidemics usually they last for three four months and uh, again, the theory that uh, with the climate changing and the uh, temperature increasing, let's hope that that works, though there's again a conflicting report about that. But hopefully, and, yeah. I think within. Yeah, yeah. And one more thing which people just go on asking us is uh, should we stop grocery? Uh, no, there is no need. I mean, there are a lot of people who say, okay, well.
have to work as work from home facilities are not available as I travel by Delhi Metro. Please guide or should I take leave? Well, I would advise you not to take the Delhi Metro because no, yeah. public transport is where the transmission usually work happens. From home, work from, from home. home. But if you can't, then I would advise you at least not to take the Metro if you have to go. Actually, you should be avoiding, but in case it's very important and you're not being able to work from home, then um, I think you should take some other means of yeah. transport. Uh, not a metro or a bus at least just avoid places where mm. there are too many people i mean there are metros and metro stations and you know there they, there are too many people so just avoid, the whole thing is to maybe avoid maybe a people. cab or yeah. would be a better idea yeah with a hand sanitizer mm. yeah. With precautions. yeah because even when you are in a cab the cab's been used by multiple people mm. so it's not like you get paranoid sitting in a cab uh, but it's just that you have the hand sanitizer as soon as you get out of the cab wipe you know just put a few drops on your hand yeah. Uh, the next question is from Susan. Um, if a family member has a normal flu, do we still require him to home quarantine? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. because we don't sure. know what sort of infection he probably could be having, common flu or whatever. But again, those infections also spread to people. Yeah. And if they also spread and yeah. we have this COVID hanging on top of us, so yeah. there'll be too much confusion. But anyway. I think uh, regardless of COVID, so you know if you see we do have a little element of swine flu also in the uh, in the community like we do we are still getting samples which are positive for swine flu it's a very mild form but it has similar symptoms so a common flu or a flu called swine flu or covid they're all flus so ideally even if covid isn't there or swine flu isn't there if a person has something which can be transmitted to another person by droplets uh, that's cough and whatever then man rather sit at home it's good for that person to uh, you know rest at home and also good for community so regardless of what it is just stay put and i would like yeah. to add that even with h1n1 the complication yeah. rates are high in elderly and yeah. h1n1 children are a high risk so that becomes very important it's not only covid covid there are not many patients but yeah. i actually feel there might be more patients of flu, swine right flu. yeah there are so but the swine flu this time is very mild so uh, it's just going unnoticed luckily it's very mild but we are getting samples uh, with common flu which are positive for swine flu and so uh, they stay at home anyways if you have common flu that as well it will just go yeah. to the community otherwise the, the spread yeah. is the same mode the next question is by Amit Sharma and he's asking what kind of food we eat. Well, we can eat any kind of food. It doesn't get transmitted the virus by yeah. eating non-veg, as I said earlier, with chicken or whatever. But make sure if you're eating non-veg, it's well cooked. It shouldn't be raw. It should be well cooked. That's, that's yeah, all. That, because you that's might any catch some way, other yeah, That's any which way. But COVID yeah. does not spread through eating non-veg or any kind of food. Let's make it very clear. Because the transmission is not from animal to human being. Some sometimes the infection also gets transmitted to uh, from animals to human beings. This is not that infection at all. So you eat chicken, you eat mutton, which anyway should be cooked well, but it's not going to get transmitted uh, by any food or, I mean, we're hearing a lot of people say eat garlic, eat this. There's no scientific, uh, you know, approach to that. But just eat healthy and sleep well and. See to it, your immunity is high and exercise if you can, as just that, just that. Well, I think the confusion regarding the food is because of the theory that uh, yeah, it came chicken. from the bats and then the snakes, no. the bats and from snakes. No. Well, that might have happened, but right now there is no transmission from animals. So we are safe to eat whatever we eat and stay healthy, do your regular yeah. exercise, take your medicines, eat well, sleep well. That's Sometimes the be. virus does get different viruses do get transmitted via mosquitoes or bats and all. This is not that at all. So there isn't any transmission happening um, by any animal. No pets, no mosquito, nothing. No chickens. Free to eat all of them. All of them. Uh, the next question is from Chandra Joshi. Is it safe to use disposals at office for drinking and food? Uh, well, yes, I think you can use it. Disposable mugs? Is, uh, what are you talking about? What is disposable? Mugs and something like that? Cup, whatever, the glasses. The yeah, it's the best. Just yeah. use it's and throw. It's the use. best. It's one-time use. Uh, and uh, yeah, just do that. I think that's the best. You know, just use and throw them. And see to it, your biomedical waste gets junk 
uh, you know, uh, according to how a biomedical waste gets disposed. I'm sure all you corporates would be having a biomedical waste tie up with an external vendor. Yes, use disposables and just chuck them and see to it, the housekeeping should see to it that the bags are tied up and then sent uh, very judiciously to the third party who's taking your junk. Yeah, actually works very good. The next question is by Dr. Ravindran. For Greater Noida employees, where is the isolation center created by the government? Well, um, uh, okay. this institute, Government Institute of Medical Sciences in Greater Noida, so that is the place uh, which is the isolation center for Greater Noida residents. The next question is by Susan. Are private labs expected to test for COVID soon? Will Max be one of the labs? If tested positive in the private lab, do we still go to the designated hospital for treatment? I'll leave that for yeah. Dr. Das. So I'll just take a few moments to explain where the private labs are at this point in time. Right now, what has happened, you would have read it in the newspapers also, the government hospital has shortlisted a few labs, private labs, and they're saying the moment they give a go ahead, uh, will be allowed to do it. So yes, Max uh, Saket uh, lab uh, can do it, but we are waiting for a go ahead from the uh, government. Um, now, obviously people cannot just walk in and say, I have cold, so I want to give my sample. Uh, that would probably be done once you have a recommendation or a prescription from a physician who's checked you for your symptoms as well as your travel history and then has recommended recommended a test. So yes, uh, we are still waiting for the government to give us a go ahead. And uh, yeah, we will be screening people if given a go ahead for sure, because we have the capacity and the capability to test at Max Saket uh, in the lab, yes. Uh, but um, the confirmatory test most of the times actually is held in Pune in the viral institute. So the confirmatory test will always be done by uh, you know, the, the Institute of Virology in Pune. Screening, which is as good or as bad as a, even a confirmatory test, because you see the test which we do, we pick up the genetic material of the virus. So it's a complicated molecular diagnostic test by the name of a PCR, where we pick up the genetic material. So most of the times, even if we are screening uh, the samples, uh, which will be your pharyngeal or your oro nasal or your oropharyngeal swab, we can pick up the uh, the genetic material. So yeah, we are prepared. We're just waiting for a go ahead and they do also have to give us a few guidelines as to you know how patients should come, how the reports should go. So there's entire SOP which is being made. But yes, uh, we do hope that uh, they involve us so that we can serve the community better, yes. And once it is uh, positive from us, then it doesn't become the headache of the patient to pick up the sample. It, it's just like a protocol. If a patient comes to us who's been prescribed by some physician uh, due to the patient's symptoms or travel history, uh, either the sample comes or the patient comes and then we take the sample, perform the screening, and then by default, we get in touch with the NICD uh, over here, the nodal place, and uh, then the sample goes uh, to the Institute of Virology in Pune. So I think within a day or so, probably by today evening, we'll be able to get more uh, because this is evolving every day and every day we are getting, uh, uh, you know, stuff, we are hearing stuff from the from the government. So yes, um, uh, our name is there, the Max Lab uh, name of Saket is there, but let's see how it rolls out. We're still waiting for a go ahead. So at this point in time, no private lab has been given a go ahead. And if they are given a go ahead, like we'll just publish it everywhere. The next question is uh, from Dr. Ravindran. Uh, which are hospitals in Britain? Yeah. Well, um,
2566901 and the email id is dmgbncorona at gmail.com the next question is from chandra joshi what should we do if we do not have travel history but feeling the symptoms of cough and cold well you should uh, stay at home if you have symptoms and uh, get in touch with your doctors and if they feel there's a suspicion of covid in your case they'll tell you to get in touch with the authorities but you don't have to panic there's a lot of as we earlier said cough cold flu so probably it's that just take symptomatic treatment take rest make sure you don't infect others don't go out just quarantine yourself for two weeks and get in touch with your doctor don't go to the uh, hospital or the clinic yeah. just call him he'll tell you what to do also as uh, dr uh, tiku had told you earlier check if you have fever you see co common cold so there is flu around a lot of people have flu which is a common flu so you will have cold and uh, cough but check for other symptoms if you're really paranoid about uh, covid i mean you should have fever you should have the breathlessness and even if you don't reach that stage see if you have if you are breathless uh, see if you have fever and go to the primary physician then the next question is uh, from baswaraj which mask is better to use to prevent corona virus well first of all i would like to tell you that not everyone needs to wear a mask yeah. so the mask is basically meant for people who have an infection who have cough cold or uh, fever so they should be the ones who should be wearing the mask and uh, it has to be a normal surgical mask which we use n95 is not meant for local people for normal people n95 is a special mask it's meant only for healthcare workers which are taking care of such critical uh, respiratory infection patients so n95 is not what we should be holding and running after but keep a surgical mask with you don't have to use it if you don't have symptoms but yes you might at some point need it so you can keep a mask with you but there's no need of rushing and buying hundreds of masks yeah, and keeping is. them at home because what we do then is that we create panic and uh, there is as it is a shortage uh, as is a large country when you actually need masks for people who are infected then you won't have them so stay patient and use a surgical mask if at all you have the need surgical yeah. mask is a normal mask normal which mask. you guys are getting from uh, any pharmacy yeah. nowadays you don't so a good one also is a triple layer mask which is called triple layers but if you don't get it in the and uh, masks are actually for uh, unwell patients not really and healthcare uh, workers and healthcare workers exposed. yeah and not otherwise mm -hmm. that's it the next question is um from mamta and she's asking i have cold and cough with stuffed nose from past two weeks there is no sign of fever though but during cough i do feel sinus headache sometimes i went to see a doctor and i'm getting treated with common cold remedies medicines please advise do i need to get tested for covid well i feel you probably know what you have which is sinusitis mm. and uh, the doctor has been treating you for that but unfortunately sinusitis takes a lot of time and what i would advise you is to see an ent and uh, maybe he will take it forward from there i haven't seen you so i can't really comment but whatever symptoms you've told me it looks like sinusitis you know need to be checked for covid you don't have a travel history i assume and the kind of symptoms you're saying don't fit into covid you probably have sinusitis just get in touch with any ent surgeon yeah and a physician needs to check you out to feel that uh, you need a lab test not you yourself so mm -hmm. leave it to the physician just go just to the get physician in touch, yeah. get in touch uh, and that will take care of your anxiety also uh, the next question is from sukrit kaur uh, how positive mind can help us to deal with the situation yeah. well i would say it's very very important yeah. because if we stay positive we can deal with it if we get stressed if we panic one we are spreading the panic to other people and then our immunity goes low we might not actually be sleeping at night thinking about what will happen if it happens to us and then our immunity goes low and then we develop other infections if not covid we might get some flu or something so we have to stay positive we see our government is doing such a good job and we as citizens we have to do our bit and we are all doing it we have to be positive and definitely i'm sure within the next 2 to 4 weeks we might be able to get rid of this infection 
The next question is by Dr. Ravindra. Is there any chances to show the symptoms after 14 days? Any such cases reported? Yes, definitely yes, but not many. There are some cases. They have said they have been shedding the virus for more than 30, 35 days. But uh, uh, again, that I would say it's not common, but there are a few cases. Uh, which have been reported shedding, yeah, yeah, but occasional. In China. Occasional. So yeah. see, we don't have too many positive cases in India, so we can't comment on the Indian cases, but yes, in China, it's been seen. I think the viremia would have been more there because that was epicenter, mm. and so it just depends upon the viral mm -hmm. load also. So, but the, yeah, the, I think the uh, largest uh, Romil was 28 days shedding of the virus, but that too in China when it all started and the viremia, the viral load would have been more mm. probably, probably. But again, it's not so it's common. Not, so yeah, usual, not common. I would say maybe 90 to 95 percent would be yeah. 14 days. Um, Uh, the next question is uh, from Ritu Gupta. Should I use gloves and mask while using public transport? Is it good approach or not for traveling? Well, uh, gloves definitely not because you'll have to keep, uh, you'll spread everywhere the infection yeah. if at all there is any there. It's not recommended anywhere. Again, for mask, as I said, uh, if you are healthy, you don't have any symptoms, you don't need to wear a mask. If you have other problems like respiratory issues or if you're immunocompromised, if you're a diabetic and you're using a public transport, then yes, maybe you can use a surgical mask. But if you're healthy and otherwise, as we said earlier, it's mask is not meant for normal people who are healthy. But if you are immunocompromised, you have health issues, you're using public transport where you could be exposed to some potential infective person, yeah. then yeah, maybe it's not a bad idea. But not gloves, because but then what will happen is if you are wearing gloves, you hold a handle and then you keep touching, you keep touching and then the next place you will touch, you'll just transmit it. Actually, it will so, spread. Yeah, it will spread faster. So avoid, uh, you know, holding handles. I mean, it's impossible not to hold handles when you're in public transport, but avoid. I mean, I, 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 want you, I, I usually actually I'm kicking the door with my foot mm -hmm. or a shoe then with the hand because you see the more handles you hold the more you either transmit or get uh, infection so just be careful not to hold too many things and if you do have a sanitizer and just keep a sanitizer just, in your pocket. Oh, yeah yeah that's it uh ritu gupta is asking should i avoid food outside hotels or street hawkers are up to what time definitely yes outside food you can order from outside to your place home but going to hotels or restaurants, definitely no. Right now, it's not recommended. Avoid going to restaurants. Even if you are going, then make sure that there's distance of about one meter or so between. No, so the one is that. So it is not so much to do with the food you are going to eat. But see what happens is that if you are going to a restaurant, the number of people will be more. That's one part. But the other thing is the mantra today is that you keep your immunity high. And uh, to keep the immunity high, you do not get infections. Like if you are eating uh, food from the hawkers or from, you know, wherever, we do usually get infections. And then if you get an infection and if your immunity is low, that is when you uh, you have chances of getting any type of infection. So it's not to do with, oh, the food which you eat would be bad or the food which is outside is going to transmit it. No, if, it's, if there is a normal infection also, like amoeba acids and all, you do get loose motions and gastroenteritis. So anyways, in those, if you eat contaminated food by any other bug, which is not a virus, which usually happens, then that will bring down your immunity. And if it brings down your immunity, and then we say, oh, well, you know, any 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 uh, virus or any bacteria can come hit us. That will lower your immunity. Nothing to do with the food which is being provided. Yes, if it, even if there's a bacterial contamination, which happens when we have food from the hawkers or from restaurants, um, that is what happens. It's nothing to do with the food per se. It's the exposure. It's the exposure, and then your immunity should yeah. not go down.
history why is it only specific for person with some travel history what? to get test? basically what he's asking is yeah. do we have limited kits and why do you only test people who have travel history? yeah so the point is no private lab has any kits as of this point in time there are no kits there are no kits which are present with any private lab that's one thing now the kits are only with the government labs and if this is a protocol of who anytime whether there is an epidemic or a pandemic there are a few guidelines which are which are laid down uh, to screen people now you can't start screening itself has its own agenda and the agenda is who are we going to screen amongst millions and millions of people you have to have some selection criteria so here the selection criteria is well it started from a particular place called china and then it went on to a few other places to begin with it started like that so the possibility of a person coming from there with flu is higher than any of us who are in delhi meerut jamshedpur and blah 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 so obviously with every epidemic they see the epicenter and then they say okay well this is where it started from so people a coming from there need to be screened screening is a very major uh, you know it's a very very major task that is the reason we are not going to just screen everybody with common cold because there are limited resources not only with india all over the world so obviously people who are more vulnerable with symptoms from a particular place or exposed to a person who's positive they need to be dealt with first because that is how you are going to contain the virus you can't just randomly go around saying you know we are going to screen each and every person it doesn't happen like that epidemics and pandemics have protocols and these protocols have been laid down after decades and decades of research so so i hope you get what i mean so there there are yes there is you see it's a virus which was never there and it has just come up and people are doing their best to take out reagents and kits and blah 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 there's a limited resource it's not like dengue which came up and then you know by then we have by now we have kits if you remember when dengue came up we didn't have kits because it was a new new thing which happened this is a brand new virus which has come for all over the world the people are constantly working even in uh, our government we are making in the government they are making their own probes and primers it's all been built in house so you can't uh, we cannot load the testing system or the healthcare system of the country or the world because we want to screen just everybody no i mean you you have to be sensitive to the fact that it's a brand new virus nobody knows a crap about we are making reagents right left and center it's been done but yes you have to not load the system be it healthcare or uh, testing facilities by just screening randomly we we follow protocols which have been given by who and cdc which have been made after decades and decades of you know collecting data from all over the world so this is good enough this testing is good enough the screening is good enough to contain so the next question is uh, from radha radha thakur can we use handkerchiefs folded three times and covering our nose and mouth instead of masks that are not easily available to everyone well we can do that but then i'm not too sure how you're going to handle it because uh, where are you going to keep your handkerchief is important you keep it yeah. in your pocket and then chuck it yeah because yeah. if you keep touching yeah. all the places and yeah, keep you, it here and there then yeah. the places and, yeah and you, so you should have uh, tissues and uh, you know uh, see to it your office has covered bins and chuck the tissue and then see to it the garbage goes in biomedical waste frequently i mean just don't have you have your housekeeping take the tissues in your uh, dustbin which is right next to your desk in repeatedly no no use carrying something which will carry so you'll carry the whole thing home then if you carry a uh, carry a handkerchief you you're going to carry it home but so in case you do as a one off incidents yeah. then you could, you should just throw that away or keep it for washing what, in your hands what, what will happen if you, what what will uh, what will happen if you wrap it three times i don't get that i mean wrap it means as in fold in three times and then put it as a mask is that what you're saying is that what you're saying yeah and for a mask you could use it i mean that's, that's all for right. uh, emergency measures but again yeah. it has to be handled properly not that... do you mean to use a handkerchief no as a mask as if you're saying yeah there are people who are putting that but just check it again if it's infected then you'll again keep Yeah, but then yeah. as we chuck the the mask, you mask, chuck the handkerchief. You can use it like yeah. a mask. Then yeah, you chuck it. 
The next question is from Shashi Kant Upadhyay. While isolating at home, what are the important things which we should take care? Well, uh, isolating at home, isolation is actually meant for uh, positive cases. Uh, if we quarantine someone, that's a suspected case. In that case, you have to be careful. You have to keep him in a single room and uh, only one person should be allowed to get inside the room. And he also has to take proper precautions, wear a mask and his dishes, everything have to be cleaned separately. His food has to be cooked separately, given to him. The washroom has to be used just by him. Nobody should be allowed to enter that room. And during those two weeks, he should not be allowed to roam around, get out of the society, out of the building. Uh, I would say out of the room, he should not be allowed at all. And nobody should go inside and he should stay put for two weeks. And if at any point of time he develops symptoms, this is for uh, suspected cases, then he has to be tested uh, and treated. But if isolation is different, isolation is when you are actually positive for the disease, COVID positive, then the authorities decide whether you have to be kept at home or you have to be kept in some other healthcare facility or in a hospital, depending on the symptoms and severity. Again, are the same symptoms, but if you are being uh, isolated at home, then the precautions have to be more because you are positive for sure. And uh, then the uh, protective gear and things like that have to be uh, used by that person who is coming in contact with the isolated patient and there are there's a certain protocol which has to be followed and that the government authorities will tell you as and when there's a situation like that happening with you any isolation has to be happened through the hospital through the healthcare workers and they'll guide you as in what is to be done but quarantine is different isolation is different quarantine is for suspected cases and isolation is for yeah, positive and, cases. And, and you know even so this is if you're symptomatic or it's if you're symptomatic but the uh, from the organization's point of view i think uh, we all have a responsibility of knowing even if we have common cold or if we have come asymptomatic from any of the cities out from any of the countries outside stay at home for 14 days i, I have gone through this personally i know a person who had come from uh, uh, from uh, Australia uh, some days back and he was told he was asymptomatic all fine but we said okay you be at home uh, for 14 days even if you're asymptomatic and guess what in the evening I saw him at the grocery store so it's not quarantine from work it's like stay put at home so if we told you well you've come from this uh, country even if you're asymptomatic you stay put at home don't do anything and you go out and the guys in the malls it's in the grocery store I mean no quarantine means even if you are asymptomatic, but you have a travel history, it is not work which you are quarantining from. It's from the world. So stay at home. So, you know, everybody needs to have this social responsibility. That is what the organization should tell their uh, employees. The next question is from uh, Mr. Disilva. How should we handle courier packages? Is it safe to give receive clothes to from the Dobi, etc.? Well, I would say courier packages are uh, safe. But you can just again use the wet sanitizers to clean them up. This the virus does not stay on these surfaces for long. Yeah. So packages, couriers are safe. Receiving cardboard, would you like to tell? I think uh, yeah. cardboard, the virus stays for very little time. Yeah, but again, but, with uh, couriers and all, very less likelihood that it will carry the virus. And uh, with yeah. the dobi, yeah, I would say one has to be careful because who knows how many people are touching your clothes and then they, you wear them. For the time being, I think for the next two to four weeks, maybe the, it's a good idea not to send the clothes out and do the ironing at home. Though in a lighter vein, I feel, you know, the dhobi's press is very, very high temperature. I hope it kills everything while you are ironing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the positive yeah, aspect. Yeah, that's the positive aspect. Yeah. Well, the next question is from Ritu Gupta. Respected sir, my child is going to park for playing and schools are off as yeah. I cannot keep at home for whole day. So what precaution should I take care of for him? Well, it's um, okay for them to go to the park, but you have to make sure that it's not a crowd of children.
entities. It's not like hanging in the air. It's only by droplets. So if there's an infected person with cold cough and whatever, whatever illness, and then he coughs and then the droplets come, it's not like hanging in the air. So if your kid wants to just go with your with you to the to the park, yeah, sure, go ahead. It's not like it's in the air and he'll breathe it in. It's not like that at all. But yeah, avoid like uh, gangs of kids, gangs. I think. Um, thank you, thank you all so much for joining. Hope uh, you found the um, session interactive or informative. And please feel free to ask us and take care of yourself and your near and dear ones and help the society. There's no need to panic. All the best. Take care, guys, and we're here to take your questions anytime.